Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today I want to do a review of this guy. This is the CRKT Razor Cliff designed by John Graham, specifically the compact version, the compact Razor Cliff. Now, before I continue on with this, I just want to give a, a, a moment of silence to John Graham. John Graham was one of the most popular knife designers and custom knife makers out there. And unfortunately, early in 2022, I believe in March, we did see the passing of the great John Graham. So for all the viewers out there, I would very much like to invite you guys to a five second moment of silence to the great man. All right, thank you so much for that. So this guy, this is a CRKT, so it's gonna be pretty budget focused, but CRKT tends to have a history of really budgeting their knives to the ground. This is an example of a really well-designed budget knife. And without further ado, let's get into the details right now. Uh, let's switch this guy on. We have here in inches, uh, a blade thickness of 0 0.12 inches. Let's talk about the, the grind right here. The grind right here is right around 0 0.5 inches. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can. We have a handle length of uh, 3, 3.28 inches. A handle thickness of a very thin 0 0.36 inches and then a a a width or handle width of 0 0.12 inches now uh, getting into the weight category i am switching on my weighing scale and you guys see that mode zero so in grams we're coming in right around 95 grams and if I can switch it to the Imperial system, we're coming in right around 3.3 ounces. So, uh, oh, I forgot to measure the actual blade length. So 3.3 ounces, this guy is coming in a very small 2.07 inches. So definitely above the uh, ounce and inch metric or standard that a lot of people use. So let's get into the review from tip to butt. Blade steel right here is 8CR13 MOV steel. Great budget steel. You know, you're going to be doing a lot of sharpening. Luckily, this has a near worn cliff blade. So it's going to be pretty easy to sharpen on a whetstone or any other sharpening system. But you can just go back and forth on the stone and then you can get this guy nice and sharpened, nice and easy. So for anything below 30 USD, 29.99, 8CR13 MOV steel, <clears throat> pretty good in my opinion. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. The finishing on this blade is a black stone wash, and that's very good because the black stone wash helps prevent rusting. ACR 13 MOV steel is a stainless steel blade, but having the black stone wash will help prevent rust even further. And then the stone wash just means that it's gonna well hide scratches a little bit easier because technically the stone or the stone washing has definitely scratched it up naturally already. So you're gonna get a nice a uh, nice blade that will kind of look the same for a longer period of time. But let's talk about the real style of this knife, which is the blade shape. This is the razor blade shape. Razor is razor plus chisel. And we don't have a chisel grind, but we do have two flattened edges right here. We have this part right here, which is the main edge. And this is actually not completely straight. Some John Graham designs are completely straight, being a worn cliff. This guy, nope. This guy has, for some reason, just a tiny kink, a tiny curvature here. I think that's on purpose, but yeah, I'm going to say it's on purpose. So you have this, this edge right here. It's not very high grind, so even though it starts off thin, it doesn't get to a very sharp point, but it sharpened pretty well coming out of the factory. The next edge is this chisel part right here and it's not a chisel grind, it is a V grind but it is sharpened and it's completely straight. Great for scraping things off of table, whether it's gum, whether it's glue, whether it's any kind of adhesive or stickers, you can do that here. But a big advantage with having these two sharpened edges is that it comes to a very nice sharp point right here. Now I do have other knives that have that kind of straighter blade edge profile which I really like but they don't come to as nice or as 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 thin of an edge or as pointy of an edge because it only has one sharpened edge. Whereas this guy, because of those two sharpened edges coming together, we get a nice gorgeous point at the end here, making this, honestly, the best box cutter I've ever had in my entire knife collecting life. It is better than the Dragonfly. It is better than the Giant Mouse Rift. This is just 
a great knife overall. Coupled that with some amazing blade ergonomics. Now, you have a flat portion up here, which when you hold it in a saber grip, my thumb uh, size as hands lands perfectly on this flat portion. So you have this great saber grip, which is going to be great for any kind of carving that you need to do. You also have a flat portion up here. So if you have your index grip for this kind of utility grip, you have a lot of control in this tip. And it's fantastic for any kind of pull cuts that you need to do to open boxes or any kind of like precision work that you need to do with the tip. This works really, really, really well. And it speaks highly of John Graham's design. Rest in peace, John Graham. It speaks very highly of his design prowess, his design skill, his design knowledge. He knows how to create very functional knife designs. So then there's that. Now, what would I do differently? Well, if it had some kind of jimping up top here where my thumb rests, I think that would be a little bit better. Or if it had like do a giant mouse and have some jimping up front here for a little bit more control, that would be great as well. But that knife is 180, 190, 200 USD. This guy, 30 USD. So definitely you're not going to get all of the features, but for what we got, it's done really, really well. Now, next up, uh, this bottom part right here, it is a sharpening choil and it's done really well. There's no like smile on the edge here. And the sharpened edge does clear the, the plunge grind entirely. And some people might want to use this to choke up. I'm not comfortable doing that because I feel like it might just slip onto the edge of the blade, uh, the, 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 the blade edge right here. And then that just, it doesn't make me feel that comfortable. So I never use it in that kind of grip. My fingers are always back here behind the flipper tab. Speaking of which, let's move back and talk about the flipper tab. Uh, it is a well-designed flipper tab shape. It has my favorite shape, which is it goes up and then it goes away from the pivot, just like my Malibu, like that, just like my ZT, like that. However, it doesn't have any jimping on it. That being said, because of this 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 flipper tab design, great for button lock for for button press kind of flipping action. If you want to pull this back. You can, it's not really designed for that. It's better designed for this kind of push button action, which is really, really nice. I just wish there was a little bit of jimping at the top here or at the front here, just for that little bit extra grippage. But all in all, it's pretty darn nice. The detent is tuned really, really well. The problem with small knives like this, and I experienced this with the Giant Mouse Riff, it's just that sometimes when you hold the small flipper flame blocks, you're going to get your, your, your middle finger on the frame itself, on the lock itself, and it's going to make it very difficult to open it because you're adding extra pressure on the lock. But this is well designed and well placed, and then there's enough clearance here, and then couple that with a pocket clip. My hands, my fingers naturally fall into a position where it makes it very comfortable to flip this guy open. So that's another great flipping action uh, base design right here. It really makes it very ergonomic to just grab into your hand and then just flip it without any worry. If you saw my giant mouse ace review, like sometimes I misfire it or I don't even fire it at all because I always end up having my finger on the frame block and it just wouldn't fire. This guy never had that problem in real life. And it overcomes one of the biggest downfalls of this knife, which is that it has a gritty bearing action. This is running on bearings uh, in a plastic cage, I believe. Uh, you can check the full disassembly for, for more info on that. But I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? Yeah, it is a very like pingy sound, rough pingy sounding knife. Um, the, the, the good thing about this is that the flipper action, the detent is well tuned and then a good flipper design and then a good frame lock positioning design with a puck clip that actually compensates for this kind of rough, for this rough-ish kind of action. It's never going to drop shut on you. Like I already mentioned, it's kind of rough. Okay, it's never gonna drop shut. It's more of a, it's not even glass finish. It's not like uh, you have like washers where you have this kind of smooth action. It's never gonna drop shut like a ZT or a Protect Malibu, but the detent really overcomes it and it actually flips out quite well. Now, one thing I do wanna talk about this, this frame is that because it's a steel frame block, they do tend to have a certain pingy sound signature. Here, listen to this. I don't know if you can hear that. But let's compare that with a much more expensive, uh, this is about 105 right now, or uh, sorry, this is about 205 right now, uh, titanium frame lock. Yeah, this definitely has more of a resounding thud, whereas this has more of a 
potentially annoying ping. That did annoy me when I first got this knife, that, that sound signature, but eventually I got used to it. And eventually, like, uh, I, I don't know if it worn in, but you can still hear that, especially when you disengage the lock sometimes. You definitely get that, that pingy kind of sound signature. Eventually, I got used to it, but that's just something you have to live with, especially when it comes to a um, stainless steel frame lock. Now, there is no uh, weight relief on the inside. There's no milling on the inside to reduce any weight. Okay, it is, however, a really thin knife, but being steel frame lock, it is going to feel dense. The P801 that I had from Reich felt heavy, felt dense. This guy, uh, exactly the same thing, especially since it's so small, it does feel dense. It is possibly the heaviest knife I have on my table right now from this guy from I, and I'm, I am flexing right now to be honest this guy this guy this guy this guy even my other budget knife a gonzo okay which is running on steel liners but it has g10 on the outside this definitely has heft it has density to it so just keep that in mind if you like that that thicker denser feel you're gonna like this guy uh, but if you want something really light uh, you might want to go with something else that's probably titanium or or g10 with steel liners like that but all in all uh it's not too bad because of the thinness of this guy and because of its shape it actually rides in the pocket really really well i kid you not like knives that are light like this guy i can still feel it in my pocket because it's kind of long especially this guy it's kind of long and it is ever so slightly thicker than this guy but because of how thin it is and how small it is in the pocket, it actually feels very comfortable. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like it's there at all. And I can still fit a lot of stuff in my pocket because of this compact size, because it is the Razor Cliff Compact. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoy carrying this guy. This is, I recently uploaded a video of my most carried knives of 2022. And this guy was one of them. And I didn't expect that. I thought it would be my Paris 3 Lightweight along with my um, Quiet Carry and my uh, Malibu, but it's not. This guy made the cut and I've really been enjoying carrying it, to be honest. Now, let's talk about uh, some more stuff. Hardware, uh, very easy to take apart. Three screws, one, two, three. I believe these are T8, T6, T6, but uh, I can't really remember right now. Haven't taken it apart in a while, but very easy to take apart. Just slabs of steel with screws, take it apart, clean it, put it back together. This knife is simply done well. It takes simplicity and does it really well and has just enough interest, intrigue and uniqueness to make it very compelling. Now, this is also the same finish as the as the blade itself. We have a black stone wash and the edges here are chamfered. So this guy is actually really comfortable in hand. And because of that stone wash, is it also rounded off the edges of the chamfering. So this guy, very, very little, very minimal. Uh, in fact, I would say no hot spots on this guy. And it's actually ergonomically a very nice knife to use. You know, I, I pass it on to even the girls in my office when they wanna cut open something, they also find it comfortable to use in their small hands. My hands are not that much bigger than theirs. If you're a small hand guy, this is a very comfortable knife to use. Now, pocket clip, we do have a recessed pocket clip. Sorry, uh, a pocket clip with recessed screws. Uh, it works great, retention is good, good spring action. I just wish this, this bill was a little bit higher up. The ski jump, if it was a little bit higher up, I can get my fingers under it a lot more easily. And personally for me, if you know me, I do like having this kind of duck bill that, that protrudes out a little bit. Uh, that just makes sure that this part here is not a hot spot and I can get my fingers down under it quite easily to push it into my pants or into the seam of my pockets. So I really like that. That's one of the only things I would change about this. Uh, the hardware, uh, non-free spinning pivot, which is great. Uh, these pivots do screw straight into the steel, which is not really that big of a problem. It's steel on steel, so you're not really going to have that much of an issue compared to this guy, which is still uh, a steel screw screwing into titanium, which can always be problematic. Okay, moving on to the back. Just a few more details to cover. You have a nice back spacer right here. It's about a 50% back spacer. It is just a uh, plastic, but it has some nice jimping in the back here. Again, chamfered and a nice sex string in the back for flipping and then for also uh, providing you with more texturing for when you grip. Speaking of texturing, you have this kind of checkered pattern here in the back. However, this is great aesthetically. I think it looks nice, but it doesn't really give any much more grip because these are very shallow and rounded 
and yeah they, they 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 look great they do add some texturing but they don't really add a lot of grip okay so that is it that's the con uh, that's the entire review now time for the conclusion this is a great little tiny flipper frame lock made out of stainless steel and that's the best way i can describe it this knife takes simplicity and adds just enough flair to it to make it unique this knife if it just had a normal drop point if it just had one of these at the front would not intrigue me and would not intrigue a lot of people it would just be like another boring knife it could be like a tiny civivi okay straightforward no frills no fuss however with the details that you have here it becomes a lot more intriguing you have some nice uh, you have some nice texturing back here nice texturing back here it's aesthetically very nice to look at but very utility focused it is very function driven you have this razor blade shape okay you have this razor blade shape which has this amazing um yeah which has this amazing point you have this utility of the of the chisel right here you're not going to be using this for any kind of meal prep because you can't do any kind of rocking motion but utility cuts full cuts fantastic in fact one great thing about this knife is that every one of your shortcomings is highly and well compensated by its other elements 8cr 13 mov steel not that impressive you're going to be doing a lot of sharpening if you're using this knife a lot but the blade shape itself really compensate for that steel and this i i can't tell you how much i love this blade shape and how much i really enjoy it in my day-to-day -day use it is dense it feels heavy but it carries really well because of how thin it is and how small it is the the action is gritty okay it's gritty it's not really refined but it's detent and its flipper is well tuned for it even the position of the flipper tab is placed really well you know sometimes you do get it very far forward and that really helps for certain knives but having this a little bit further back uh, i don't know why if it was a little bit far forward it might be a little bit awkward for me to use it but having it this far back like this part rests right here which means that i don't need to second guess or reposition my hand uh, when i want to flip this it just comes into the right spot and then it flips open you know you have a pocket clip that has recessed screws not the best in terms of this part right here but you know, it works well it functions it is a knife that's extremely easy to take apart maintain it is just it is that perfect marriage of simplicity plus kind of uniqueness that makes a knife nerd happy to use it and i think that is the best way to describe it it is simple but just enough for a knife nerd to really enjoy it and when i show this to people they kind of get not annoyed they kind of not annoyed it's not the word they kind of get intrigued that's the word they kind of get intrigued by this blade shape because it is so unique and there is an element of flex there okay uh, have you guys ever owned this and let me know if you've ever owned any other john graham or graham design knife okay thank you so much and as always stay ready